What's up guys, Colton Lindsay here with the WGR Academy coming at you live inside of the private, actually I don't know if it's private, this was not really private, exclusive free Facebook group for you guys. It's not private, I let a lot of people in so I can't say it that way, but it is a closed group, invitation only, and man, congratulations, appreciate you guys being here because in 50 days, we're at nearly 2,000 of you guys supporting the movement, the WGR Academy, the Prospecting Mastery. How many of you guys would like to improve your prospecting even more? And today I want to talk about how you can avoid making that big mistake in prospecting over the next 90 days that most of the realtors are going to make today. How do I know? I'm 13 years in the business and I've myself made this mistake before. I've seen others make it before. I'm watching others begin to make it right now. And I think a better question is, and it comes from a friend of mine, Kevin Ward. You might have seen him at uh, Yes Masters before. I've interviewed him a few times and one of the things I asked him one time is, what, what is it? Why do more? Why do agents fail in real estate? And he says, Colton, the better question you got to ask is, what's the solution to help more agents succeed in real estate? And I thought that was a curious question, and I've learned over the years that the better the questions I ask, the better the answers that my mind gives me. Yes, put a yes in the comments if you agree with that. Oh, by the way, if you're watching live, drop an L. If you're watching R, drop the replay. Hey, also, Mandy Schlenninger, thanks for being on. Appreciate you. So let's take a look at this. The better question is, is how can you be even more productive with your prospecting over the 90, next 90 days? That's a question you want to ask yourself because your mind will then kick out answers that will allow you to be more productive. But here's what happens. I want to demonstrate or I guess illustrate for you what happens for most realtors and why they begin to fail over the next 90 days so that we can begin to see even better the solution. So the biggest mistake that I'm seeing realtors make in regards to prospecting, and I spoke about this a little bit in Fearless Agent is, it's going to get busy with stuff to do over the next 90 days. The market's gonna heat up, Thing, emotions have been a little high, a little tense in the market if you haven't noticed, because a lot of realtors' cash flow has been low. I predicted this eight months ago, that we were gonna have a thinning of the herd because what we would see is an, a decrease in inventory through the winter months, and we also saw a decreased amount of home sales, simply because there wasn't homes to sell, right? Not to mention, we've seen an increase of interest rates. How many of you over the last six months have seen interest rate hit four and a half percent? Does that not make homes more expensive per month for the buyers, which makes it more difficult for buyers to buy homes? So that creates some intensity in, in it, uh, kind of some tension in the market as well. What this does though is agents get tired and exhausted. And so the first thing that agents start to skip out on over the spring market and it's the exact time that they should do more of it is their prospecting. Why? Because they've been running ragged in the fight to suck less throughout the last 90 days, throughout the winter months, that now as the spring months hit, they're a little tired, they're a little exhausted, right? Some of y'all started taking off from the end of November to the first part of January, and you start January, and it's been a slow motherfucking start to the year, true or true. I know because I talk to thousands of you guys across the country, I get your feedback, I listen to other people, right? I've seen my own market, right? It's been slower than normal. In fact. One of the lenders, the lender that I work with, he said that they're 30% behind. He's the number one lender in the market. He said they're 30% behind their projections so far for the year, right? I talked to another top realtor in the top 2% in the Salt Lake market. He said it's the worst January he's had his entire seven year career, right? My team included, although our revenue is really solid, it's not where I wanted it to be, right? So I guarantee you this isn't just these three or four people this has happened to that I'm sharing examples with because I got a whole list of other people and so it may be happening to you, right? Or maybe you're on the flip side, you're really productive and it's been the best year you've ever had. I know a lot of younger agents that are in my mastermind two, three years into the business, they're having the best January and February they've ever had, right? And so now they've got new challenges in the next 90 days. Either way, both sides of the coin have one major roadblock ahead of them. Am I going to prospect even more or not? Am I going to do lead follow-up even more or not? Am I going to increase my marketing even more or not? Because when you're tired in the morning of getting your ass kicked or your ass handed to you or just being busy doing your business and you have that choice of getting up or not, that's what's going to really dictate if you do your prospecting or not, right? And as you get busier with more admin work and more things to do and more customers to serve and more buyers to show homes to and more appointments to go on, are you going to start scaling down your prospecting or are you going to increase it even more? Because between now and the summertime is a lot of money to be made. But as a, as, as a winner in the real estate business, not, this is never going away. In the tech real estate boom of 2018, the real estate tech boom that we're having this year, this will never go away. You've got to be able to set appointments and go on those appointments and get those contracts signed. Yes, you've got to begin to use some text messaging here. Yes, you've got to be able to have Facebook retargeting ads and, and, and Google retargeting ads to be in front of them and be recallable. But that's, not, that's not prospecting, that's marketing. You can set that and automate that, or you can leverage that out. But 
you've got to be talking to the people, to the hot leads, to the people that are going to do something in the next 15 days. You've got to be setting those appointments, which means if you're sleeping in in the morning, you cannot, you'll not get to it, right? Which means if you're busy doing admin work, you cannot get to it. So everything else should be secondary in your business to being on the phones or setting up text messages or sending voicemails. Now don't hide behind the text message. I want to be very clear because I, I know I, even, even one of my friends and partners, he says don't text message. And I completely disagree and I tell him this all the time, but don't try to use text messaging to set appointments. Use text messaging for the first step is to find someone on the other line, is someone a real human or is it a fake number? Am I wasting my time? Second thing is, is move them to a phone call conversation. So it's not that phone call prospecting goes out the window here, it's move it to a phone call present, uh, conversation where you can set the appointment. Everything is about moving it down the line and getting it to the time where you get to do a presentation and ask them to sign right here, sign their John Henry, right? So, moving forward, here's what I want to see from you guys is increased prospecting. That's why we did the 28-day prospecting challenge. I want you to do even more prospecting. When you feel overwhelmed with all the shit you got to do, put that stuff on the back burner and do even more prospecting. I know it's kind of sound goofy, but if you do this, do it. Got a question from Connor. Would you join EXP if you could? Great video and love the advice. Always. Fearless agent. Great question, man. In fact, I've been going back and forth because I've held my tongue a lot on social media with the EXP. And uh, to me, it is very clear that that company and me are not a great fit in its current form. I don't know what the future holds for me. And it could shift and it could make something different. Personally, I, I had to make a decision because I've been working with the executives there and a couple of the leaders in the company, and I've, they've been kind of coaching me on my social media, so to speak, you know, however much you can coach me on social media. And I finally made this decision that I don't want to be a part of that company if they don't want me how I am. I'm not going to shift my shit just to make them happy, right? But here, are, I have some other concerns. I'm glad this brought, I, I am actually really glad you guys brought this question up because I the number one thing that I always hear about uh, EXP is how transparent that company is, right? You go to their join uh, EXP website, it says transparency, get the stuff out of the shrubs of the darkness or whatever and get it out to the open. But they're not talking about their biggest problem, right? Here's some of my concerns. Number one is they are growing really quickly, true or true. If you guys have noticed that, put a yes in the comments. Everyone's talking about it. They're growing at a very fast pace, right? So as you guys begin to grow, or as EXP begins to grow, I personally don't believe that they have the ability to support the growth. I think that they're going to drop the ball there. Anything that ever goes parabolic always crashes. Look at the hunts in the, in the 70s. I think it was in the 70s when they chased the silver market. Look at the real estate market in 2007, 2008. Look at, look at their stock. They just went up to 17 and we came down like that. Look at the Bitcoin, went to $20,000 and came down like that. Look at stock markets, their stocks that have gone parabolic, they come down like that. That is one thing I would be concerned of. Number two is they're not really a technology company. They don't own their technology. They never, it's nothing proprietary. In fact, if you go to their virtual brokerage, that shit's from like 2002. I remember like when I was in college seeing that crap and you could play like SimCity or some shit, right? So that's not real great technology. They're leveraging out through other people's technology, which is basically they're giving away all their data to bigger companies. So I think that's kind of strange. A real tech company like homie.com, it's a local company here. They have their own people uh, typing their code, right? So real tech company has their coders growing it, right? I think that's one of the challenges. Uh, I think the other challenge is they have a divided leadership right now. So um, I think partially people um, want to grow it more advanced. Like, I mean, Jay Kinder, he's a prime example. He's out there, he's out there doing it as a prime example of how to grow, okay? I think some of the leadership doesn't understand that and they want to kind of mesh this future of real estate brokerage, this technology-based brokerage with the old school of way of doing things and that just doesn't work. It has to shift 100%. So great question, I'll elaborate more on this over the next couple of weeks. What advice do you give LOs, not just agents? Great question, Stephanie, so what I advise LOs to do as well, prospect even more. But how I would suggest that you prospect is that you prospect through networking and getting relationships with agents that can send you 25 deals a year, right? Can send you 10 deals a year, two or three deals a month, right? So you gotta be really networking with realtors that can grow you. And then also, here's what I would suggest for um, you to help realtors. The concern I always had with lenders over the years is they wanna take and take and take, but they never wanna give back to the realtor, right? So I mean, my lender is awesome. He comes to me, he's like, hey, here's a marketing budget I'm willing to spend with you because I believe in you right so we've got 
currently between the two of us, two thousand dollars each, four grand in marketing that we spend every single month, and we begin to talk every month. How can we shift that? How can we utilize that to grow each other's business? I don't necessarily rely on him to send me referrals, nor does he rely on on me to send him referrals. But it naturally happens because we know how each other work, and we have a game plan to grow together. Does that make sense? So collaborate with your agents, get some that are productive, and see how can you help them grow even more. Uh, Connor said, I just think traditional brokerage is broken, but it's a, pro it's a paradigm. I totally agree, man. That's why when we started our own company, um, Refined Real Estate, what we're looking for is we're not looking to really train agents from the ground up unless they come through the WGR sales system, right? And we are doing that. We, we hire them on through inside sales agents. We hire them on through junior agents, and they're being successful. I mean, Raiden, one of our junior agents, about to go senior agent, just signed an expired seller for $450,000 at heaven percent over the phone. Right, so we've got opportunity to grow, but I'm not looking to handhold everyone. I'm looking to handheld winners. Right, that's who I want to help grow. Then the other way we're doing is we're looking for the company in our company. We're looking for people that are wanting to collaborate, but are they're go getters. They're going to make it them happen. Right, they want to talk about ideas and execute, but they don't need me to execute their ideas. That's kind of the challenge with traditional brokerages is their numbers are based on a bunch of low producers, and for me, that's not where I want my business to be currently. Right, so I think there's I think here's my prediction. Write this down tattoo it into your journal or something by the end of 2018 maybe mid 2019 I think that the real estate brokerage systems and the industry as a whole will be shaken up never like like it's never been shaken up before I think we're going to see things happen that we could have never predicted as technology moves in big time into the real estate industry it does not mean you as realtors are going away it means you've got to adapt quicker on how technology can work for you versus against you because these big tech firm when you think about a tech firm too realty tech or real estate tech firm any tech firm, it's a data company. They're sucking data in, they're analyzing it, and then they're seeing how can they suck even more money out of people, right? That's what we're going to see happen in the real estate industry. So you're either going to get sucked out of or you're going to be able to use it to your advantage. For example, Facebook. Personally, I can't compete with Facebook as far as creating the data. It's just not possible. They've got 2 billion plus users creating content that they can analyze that data, they can then retarget, and then they can sell that algorithm back to people like you and me. So then I have a question is, can I use their algorithms that they're developing and help me grow even more, right? And so that's what you've got to be able to do is take their data and the tools that they're giving you and adapt them to your business and grow, a lot like Gary Vaynerchuk teaches. So that would be my suggestion for you guys. Um, so you're going to determine your future. You getting up and doing what we talked about today, are you going to get on the phone and prospect and follow up with the leads, not at 9.30, not at 10.30, 8 a.m.? Are you starting it? Are you going to get back on the phones in the afternoon for another 45 minutes and follow up with those leads that you can get in touch with? That's the secret. Thanks for being here, guys. If you really, really want to know how to win over the next 18 months as the shift happens, because it is happening like never before, join the Prospecting Mastery Program. It's in the description, either above or below. Click that link. It's $397. You get the program forever. You get 30 days free in the Prospecting Alliance, where I've created a, an exclusive group of individuals that are, are committed to not letting the market swallow them up, but more importantly, being the cream of the crop over the next 18 months. Because as the tech boom happens, there will be winners that are realtors on a whole nother level. We will see as the tech boom goes and these companies grow, we're also gonna see realtors grow on a very high level. And we're gonna see a lot more get crushed. So you're either gonna be a part of the people that get crushed, or you're gonna be with me and my crew and the people that are gonna to rise to the top, where you wanna be a part of. And it's not just me and my crew, but there's a lot of people out there like Josh over at GSD mode. Like I said, I already mentioned JK. There are going to be, a, we'll go back to the EXP topic, there are going to be a lot of people that make a lot of money in EXP. That is no question. In fact, I know for a fact my exact downline from Keller Williams would have paid me about $150,000. That's a lot of money. Here would be my concern because their growth is so fast, so parabolic that I do see it, my prediction is, I could be wrong, that it does come back, it does crash. So then over the next two years, if I focus on building that recruiting and my revenue shares coming through, now all of a sudden that disappears because it can't sustain itself. I waste two years of focusing on bu building something that just disappears. Over the next two years, in the biggest boom ever, I want to focus on building something that's going to blow beyond the next 18 months, 24 months, that I get to keep that pays me over and over again. Because you know, I love passive residual income and I hope you do too. Right? I mean, I just did, and a lot of people aren't talking about Bitcoin anymore. I'm getting off on a tangent today because of this, Connor. What the hell? 
I just did this, me and one of my mastermind partners, Al Tori, dude, we just did an investment in cryptocurrency that everyone's saying stay away from that is now beginning to pay me $3,500 a month. I'm less than six grand into the investment, right? So there is huge opportunity going forward if you generate cash number one through your prospecting, through your real estate business, don't look for other ways, get on the phones of prospects, set appointments, generate cash flow, grow your, your skill set, master your schedule, master your presentation, become great at business, right? And then second is manage your cash flow, have it come into you and begin to build passive and residual income. Invest your money for returns and invest in relationships for returns. You guys got me? Put a bunch of yeses in the comments, a bunch of thumbs up if you're following where I'm going with this. Moral of the story is, don't let the trap of the spring market swallow you up by doing less prospecting. Do more prospecting. You feel me? Peace out. Join the Prospecting Mastery Program. We'll see you later. Technology going to disrupt the market and it, how is it going to affect me as an agent? That's the question that I want to answer, right? So yes, it is going to disrupt the market. It already has. Have you heard of Zillow? Have you heard of Homey.com? Have you heard of Trulia? Have you heard of Mojo Sells? Have